Hi there. If you're looking for a quick overview of a corset making process, this video is for you. Here I will be making a single layer buskless underbust corset with external boning channels that I plan to wear both over and under my clothes for a moderate hourglass shape. You can use the same principles shown in this video for any type of corset, whether it's for fashion, cosplay, tight lacing or waist training. However, this is just one way of making a corset, so bear that in mind. For this corset, I'm using Aranea Black's free pattern called Anna, and I will link her website in the description box below. She has multiple other free corset patterns available as well, and a YouTube channel with more comprehensive videos on corset making, so if you want more in-depth instructions, please check out her channel. This video is supposed to be more of an overview of the different steps, so you can get a general idea of what tools you might need, etc. I have a mild scoliosis, so I tried to modify her patterns to fit my body shape. However, I later on realized that I was able to cinch down a lot more with this pattern, so the size I had chosen was too big for me and the modifications I made didn't work out that well in the end. For that reason, I won't be covering pattern modifications on this video, but Aranea Black has a really comprehensive video on that as well, which doesn't only apply to her patterns, but other clothing patterns as well. Here I'm drawing the patterns on some twill, I believe, as I want to test the pattern out first before cutting into the more expensive satin coutil. I always make a mock-up if I'm using a modified or a self-made pattern, and I know it's almost like double work, but it will be worth it in the end. I'm drawing the outlines of the patterns and adding one centimeter seam allowance to them. I do this for all the pattern pieces for both sides, instead of folding the fabric and cutting duplicates from one side. This way, I get the markings on all panels, which I need when I start sewing the pieces together. Then I pinned and sewed the panels together one by one, and after that I was left with this one single piece. Then I went ahead and added some grommets and flat steel bones to the mock-up in order to be able to lace it on. I didn't use spiral steel boning for this mock-up, although you should do that. A quick way to add them is to use masking tape, so that cuts down the sewing time. However, I was already able to tell that the mock-up was too big on me, so I just went and proceeded to cut the pattern pieces to a smaller size and started drawing them in the final fabric, which in this case was satin coutil. I then started pinning and sewing the panels together, just like with the mock-up. I was trying my best to align the markings of the patterns to each other and sew on top of them. Here I'm demonstrating how I pinned the panels to each other. When I pierced the panels with the pins, I pierced them so that the pin would go in where the markings are on the top piece and come out where the markings are on the bottom piece. This gets more important and more difficult when the corset pattern gets curvier. You want to follow the markings precisely or you will end up either adding or subtracting from your patterns, which can result in a completely different size of a corset or even a corset that is not symmetrical on both sides. Once we have sewn together all the pieces, we should end up with one big piece again. Since this is a single layer corset, I had cut out just one piece of fabric for each panel, except for the back panels. For them, I cut out two pieces so that I can sandwich the flat steel bones between them. Here, I'm measuring where I want the boning channels and leaving enough space for grommets in between them. Then you just sew on top of the markings and you will have two boning channels for your flat steel bones. Then I start flattening the seams by pressing the seam allowances to one side with a roller. Ideally, you would use a clothing iron for this, but the coutil I'm working with seems to hold its shape once pushed down a bit. Then, I sewed down the seam allowances to make the seams flat and more pleasant to work with. You might notice that the shiny side of the corset doesn't look as nice as the back side, and there is a reason for that. I want the inside of the corset to have less bumps, so it's more comfortable when worn against my body, and I will be covering the seam allowances with external boning channels. I then added the waist tape on the back side of the corset, and the purpose of the waist tape is to prevent any stretching at the waistline where the pressure is the highest. I then proceeded adding the grommets by piercing a small hole and stretching it out with the knitting needles, increasing the diameter each time until the hole was big enough for the grommet. I then used this hand tool to press the grommets in place. I then start making boning channels from the same fabric using a bias tape maker. This is in a size 12mm or 0.5 inches, and I'm not sure if this is the best way to make boning channels, and there are also ready-made boning channels available, uh, but the ones that I had didn't match the fabric here, so I decided to make my own. 
If you know of a better method of making bone-in channels, please leave a comment below. I trimmed down the seam allowance and covered as much as I could with the boning channel. I then sewed them down from both sides, leaving enough space for the actual bones to go in. Before adding any bones, I closed the boning channels from one side by just sewing over them a couple of times. I then proceeded cutting and capping spiral steel bones. These bones are sold pre-cut with the caps on, but since I make different size corsets, I've opted for a bundle of spiral steel boning that I can cut to a specific length. I will add the links to the corset supply stores in the description box. Then it seems like I forgot to film the rest of the process, but I inserted the boning and closed the boning channels. I then added the bias binding that was made with a 25mm or 0.9 inch bias tape maker. There are different ways of adding the bias tape and there are many tutorials here on YouTube and mine isn't the best looking so next time I might want to try some other method. This is the corset after seasoning it for a couple of days. You can see how it has already started to take my shape a bit and the waist tape is leaving some impressions on the fabric. And here's the corset on me. The size is perfect and the lacing gap closes evenly from the bottom and the top. However, as you can see, the lacing gap is twisting a little bit and there can be several reasons for that. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have a mild scoliosis, which I tried to take into account with the mock-up, but decided to just make the corset without altering the pattern. That asymmetry could be causing the twisting. Another reason could be that I didn't align the pattern with the grain line correctly, which means that the fabric might be stretching under the tension. A third explanation is that I might have made mistakes during the process and the panels are not symmetrical, which can cause a twisting. However, I'm overall pleased with how this corset turned out and I hope you found this video helpful.